everything sets and nice. Boys, the crap, mice. You need so gone street lights. Girls inside them pass space flights. It go be wild tonight. Yeah, and caught chilling. And I will be feeling. Many of you need a new pair and a pair of possessing it. Yeah, and caught chilling. And I will be feeling. Many of you need a new pair and a pair of possessing it. <laughs> well, good. Hello, good morning. You're welcome to Warm Up Plus here on TV3. My name is Yao Ofusulabi. You know, every Saturday morning I do this with a beautiful Anya Lalote. Come on, we have a very interesting lineup today because aside our interesting dugout conversations, we have stunning guests, some of which would be a huge surprise to you viewers. But also we wrap things up as usual, week in, week out. We promise and we deliver absolutely fantastic music. Well, most certainly, fantastic music, excitement, and a lot more. Today, we have two legends in the studio, and as Aniela mentioned, also two very fun people that you would be expecting on the, on the show uh, this morning. But, Aniela, what, what do you make of the guests this morning? I, I think that these are legends in their own capacity, because, Kawawa, having grown up watching some of these guys, it's going to be a huge pleasure to have them on the show. But before we delve right into that, we'll take a little break. When we come back, there's more on Warmer Plus. Let's take it back to yesterday, eh? before the war, before the fights. Eh? You know they give me no funny replies. Eh? Where you they send me memes for Easter? Eh? Young Kasai, you know they bad. Eh? Now say me fry, you know they answer. Eh? Why you they say you know they need to? Eh? Why you they treat me like a stranger? We're back on Warm Up Plus. If you like what I'm wearing, I'm beautifully clothed in gold fab in Tema. And if you want to reach them, you can reach them on the number 024-937-9052. Again, the number is 024-937-9052. Now, Kawawa and I are going to get right into it. And the first guest that I'm going to introduce is, you know, a retired Ghanaian professional footballer. He featured in the 2006-2010 FIFA World Cups. He's also played, if I'm saying he's played everywhere, I mean it, he's played everywhere. He's played in Sweden, he's played in Greece, he's played in Israel, he's played in Germany. I can't name all of these places, but help me welcome Derek Boating. Almost certainly, Derek Boateng is seated in the studio. He's not, he's not alone this morning. We have another legend of the Ghanaian and German game. And, uh, you know, he's a really big man, you know, if you are saying. He's the, technically the first Ghanaian ever to play in the World Cup final. He played in the 2002 World Cup final when Germany took on Brazil. He has played at Schalke for over 10 years, played at Hanover, played at Greater Firth, and also at St. Pauli. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Gerald Asamoa. That's my son. <laughs> Right, so uh, we are settling down for the dugouts now, as uh, guests are in the studio. Let's just get into the conversation. Gerard, you're welcome to Ghana again. Thanks, thank you. How are you feeling? I love Ghana. I love being in Ghana. So it's been a long time. I right. think my last time was three years ago. Yeah. And now I've been four days in Ghana. It's amazing. But it's been, it's been six years since I, I last met you, actually. Uh, I, I don't think you would remember, but I interviewed you on the Thomas Sports Stadium. Uh, really? Yeah. At Awudu Academy. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah Derek, yeah. you're welcome also. Thank you. Bro. How are you feeling? Very good. Always looking cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Gerald, it's really exciting to have you. I haven't met you before, Derek. I haven't met you either, but I'm really excited. Now, Gerald, for somebody who's spent a lot of time in Germany, it feels good to be back in Ghana. You don't get to come here often. I try to come back to Ghana because, because 
I work in Germany, but most of the time when I get time, I want to come to Ghana because I have my family in Ghana. So I love being here, and this guy is also here, so I love seeing him. So <laughs> when you were come coming on, you said you are his son. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> but but, <laughs> but Derek, um, uh, coming back to you, how is how's life after football? I know, I know you are the Right to Dream Academy. Last October when I was there, I, I spoke to you as well. So, I mean, how is it? How is the, the journey? Thanks to God, everything is moving well. Like you said, I'm really, really happy. I'm grateful to God and the way things are going after my career. And, you know, like you said, I'm working with you at the Football Academy as a scout. Yeah. And I'm really, really enjoying it. You know, helping people is something that I really, really love doing. Yeah, please hold on. So, right, so uh, that's, uh, that's the. Right, so that's Derek Boati in, uh, in the studio this morning, also with Jared Asama. We'll take a, a quick break. When we come back, there's more right here on Roman Plus. If you sad because of joy, what are you get? Well, welcome back. This is Warmer Plus right here on TV3. My name is Yao Ofosulabi and Derek. Uh, we're speaking about uh, your life after football and how it's going at Right to Dream Academy. Uh, it's going really, really well. Like I said earlier, yeah. I'm really, really grateful to God and how things are going after my career. I'm so blessed and you know, a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So yeah. Me having that opportunity, I'm really, really good for taking it very seriously. Yeah. And working with Raji Train for me is a dream come true. Yeah. So right, the dream is a, the best academy in uh, the world right now. Yeah. And we are doing so much for the community mm -hmm. and not just Ghana. Yeah. The whole Africa and now we are opening a new one in uh, Egypt. Egypt yeah. Yeah, we shall be there next week okay. to scout. Right. And I'm really, really happy we have players coming through from the Right to Dream Academy, playing for FCN, players like Kudus Mohamed, exactly. uh, Kamar Dene, who is coming yeah. as well, and Maxwell. And yeah. you know, we have a lot. Yeah. So we are really, really happy what we are doing, right. and we hope things will go well the way we want. John, you're also um, a coach now at, at Schalke. How's that also going? Uh, things moving well. We just relegated to the second league, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 well, we are still, uh, I think we are still fighting. But I think if, if you hear na the name of Schalke Ofer, I think Schalke Ofer belongs to one of the biggest clubs in uh, Germany. Mm -hmm. But I think this uh, mismanagement, what happened the last year was not so good. So we're trying to, we are trying our best to bring the, this big team up to the uh, first league again. Yeah. yeah. Now, 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 Jared, also let me, let me ask you, you've, you've done a lot. I mean, you've played at Schalke, you played for 10 years at Schalke. You've, you've played in several Bundesliga teams as well. You played in the World Cup final. I mean, looking back, do you think that you fulfilled your childhood dream of, of playing football at the highest level? Yes, uh, really. I never, I never thought to be a professional player because when I left uh, Ghana, I think uh, I left uh, Ghana when I was 12 years, right. my mom was uh, my opponent. She want, didn't want me to play soccer. So right. she took me from Ghana to, uh, to Germany to stop playing soccer. And then <laughs> in Germany, everything went worse. So I became <laughs> the player who I wanted to. And I think uh, get, uh, being a professional with 17 years and making this uh, huge career, I think it's what I was dreaming of. I never thought leaving Ghana to play for Germany, never thought about it, but I think it's happy because well, God knows what comes, but I really love what I'm doing and I'm, I'm thankful for what God has given me. Yeah. I mean, Charles, still on the subject, you're somebody that has moved from not just playing skills, but into a managerial role. There are some who have attempted it, but haven't been that successful at it, but you seem to be doing quite well. What is it that's been keeping you going with the transition? I think uh, I'm, I'm using my experience what I had in my career, so uh, putting this in mind, working game, what I'm doing, and I, what you need is have a good team around you, they help you, and I think this is the thing what helps me be successful in Germany. Then. But also, you're playing for, you know, you're coaching at a foreign country, and you have been quite vocal about the racial issues that have been going on there because there has been a lot of racism, and there is no place for racism in football. How are you navigating that, and do you think that there will come a time where in football, <clears throat> racism would be eradicated for good. This is the fact what we are doing in Germany, and not only Germany, I think most of the Europe countries. Uh, we need to talk about what we are going through, and uh, I always say I don't want my, my, my kids to have to, to go through to, that. To go through all what I went through, and the same thing we have a friend, but I think the people are now ready for us, because if 
there wasn't a, I will not be a manager in Jebel Shaka, but we are still fighting. We need to, we need to improve. We blacks, we need to improve. We need to tell them what's, what's, wrong, what's going on. And if we don't do it, it's wrong. we're going to say the same what is happening, but I think we are fighting to change things in Germany. I mean, I do appreciate the fact that you yeah. have been vocal about mm -hmm. it, exactly. Now, Derek, I mean, I'm very excited to have you on the show here, so <laughs> it's going to be very hard for me to suppress my smile. But I want, I want to talk to you about Liberty, because you have you had played there previously. <laughs> Are you happy with your current form, currently? <laughs> 16th on the table, Derek, 16th on the table. And I mean, the past recent fixtures, it hasn't been that good, muddled with draws, losses, and very few wins in there. How are you finding their form this season? I think, like you said, it's really, really difficult for them. And, you know, sometimes football clubs go through something like that and they don't have to put their head down. They have to keep on running and keep on looking forward. Like Gerard said earlier, Shaka is a huge club, big club. My first time when I played with Shaka, against Shaka in the Champions League, that time when I met Gerard at Sama was like 15 years ago, right? Or 12 wow. years ago. Amazing. Yeah, and we became friends from there, you know, and I see how the, uh, the club is and how big he is. And I've been visiting him a lot and I've been going to the stadium sometimes. And now they are in this situation. It tells you that, look, you have to work hard no so matter easy. what you are, uh, no matter what you have. So right now, Liberty have to keep on working. The league left with seven games. <clears throat> it's still not over. They have to fight. They have to fight and make sure that they'll be in the right channel. I don't, I don't think it's going to be easy for them. So as a player, they have to know the situation they are in and they have to bring themselves together. They need each other right now, yeah. not on the pitch and off the pitch, not just training and just talking, then after everybody go their way. No, they need each other around all the time and make sure that they put a team where it belongs. I mean, definitely more so because they are going up against Wafa, who lies Sith on the table. So it's not going to be a very easy task for them to surmount. Yeah, like I said, uh, right, you know, in, in, a, in a situation like that, when you are in Every game is important to you. Right. Every game is, uh, gives you so much pressure. So you have to be ready for every game because people want to push you down mm -hmm. and you have to survive. Yeah. So you have to do everything to make sure that you have to survive. If the team, the opponent is running, you have to run extra. You have to make sure that you're in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. because nothing comes to you easy when this kind of, in this kind of situation you are in. So I hope the players will get it and they will fight and make sure that, look, they put a team where it belongs to you. Because when we were playing, you know, we, we make sure that, look, we do our job. Right. Now, 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 Derek, I mean, um, just to bring you into the conversation on, on Hearts of Oak, I mean, Liberty are not doing too well, but Hearts are doing <laughs> excellent, actually. They, they are in first position. They play this weekend against Accra Great Olympics. What do you make of the, the, the derby that's coming up this weekend? Well, it's a huge match. It's a huge match. When I was ch uh, Chad, uh, Chad and my mom support Accra Asofo. Okay. And when I was playing for Liberty, and there's a game we're supposed to play against Asofo, and my mom told me that I have to be careful. Anything she cook at home, I should know it because... <laughs> <laughs> because she knows where her allegiance lies. Yeah, yeah my, my stomach will... <laughs> and I cannot play that game. So Accra Asofo and the Great Olympics are a huge club. Yeah. And the, 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 if you talk about Ghana football, you cannot match uh, Ghana football without Accra Sofo and uh, Great Olympics. It's yeah. not Ghana football. Exactly. It's not a league. And they are going to play against each other. I think it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Great Olympics, no one expects them to be where they are right yeah. now. And right. they are doing really, really well. I love that they are number, uh, the captain, I think number 10 or something. Uh, Awaku. Awaku. Yeah. He's my favorite player. <laughs> I was in the stadium against uh, Olympics, against uh, uh, Asante Kotoko. Right. And this guy killed the game, and I was so happy. And I was, I was asking some of the guys, uh, uh, Kobleibu. I was sitting with Kobleibu, and I was yeah. sing, asking him, "Who is that guy?" And he told me his name is Awaku, oh, and he was, he was an old player. He used to play with the national team, but I never met him before. Exactly. So, so I was dying to meet him, you know, because you know I'm a big football fan. Exactly. So the last time when I met him, I hugged him, you know, and yeah. I showed him that look, I'm supporting you. I'm happy the way you are playing, and. I think this game is going to be great yeah. because both teams have great history mm -hmm. and they all from Accra, the city. So I think it's going to be a very tough game. John, let me let me bring you into the conversation now. Um, it's not just Accra, like the Accra derby that's happening. Definitely, <laughs> we, we, we are Santini there. 
No, yeah, I know I know Kotoko, Ashanti yeah. goes. I heard about it. Right. About Kotoko, it's like when I was born in uh, Mampong and uh, Kuma, Kumapim. <laughs> uh, Kuma Pim. Uh, Kuma Pim. I was uh, Kotoko was one of the greatest things. Right. But I was not used to the Ghana football, but I I, I, I know Ashanti got because Ashanti got was like similar like being in German Bayern Munich. Okay. So I love uh, I love uh, Ashanti Koto really. Right. But how are they doing? They're, they're, they're second. They're, they're second, second currently. Second. Uh, just two points behind Hearts. You oh, know okay. the reason why I said it's no interesting in Ghana football right. before? Why? Why? Yeah, when they come to the blaster, they don't give him the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They drop him. <laughs> and I was, I, was, I was standing there watching him. I said, this player and this looks so fit and Ghana do doesn't play him. So I was just watching him till I met him and he sta we started talking and he told me, yeah. They didn't give me a jersey. I said, don't worry. John, was it, was it disappointing for you? Um, not really, because I was surprised. Because, uh, here we are, here we are. <laughs> I, I was really surprised because they here were fighting we for me. They were fighting for me. They came to Germany. I said, okay, I decided to play for Ghana. So I came. And I think my performance, I think I was a one week here. It was my first time coming back to Ghana when I left <laughs> Ghana. So uh, it was amazing being in Ghana. Then I was with the team. Uh, training session was good. And... Then we got before of the game in Germany, we are used to like three, three hours for the game. Everybody knows who is playing, the first 11. But I was sitting in my room, I didn't know what was going on. So I went to uh, Charles Akona, was uh, the captain. So I went to uh, Charles. Charles was in Germany. So I said, Charles, what's going on? Who is in the team? Hey, I don't know. After some trust with in my room. He's lying, he knows. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want to hurt your feelings. <laughs> so he told me, I don't know. So I went. I was with Otto Ado, so we went and I said, hey, I don't know, the coach will come to me now. He gave me some list who is in the team. So we went, I went to my room. 20 minutes later, I came out and everybody was wearing trust with. I was not <laughs> among of this team. I said, okay, and nobody talked to me. Right. And I remember after the game, uh, it was one game, so after the game, everybody left the stadium. And I was saying this, I was alone, so I didn't know, what, know where to go. So I called my mom, she was in Ghana. She oh. came and picked me from the uh, from stadium and bring me to the hotel and pick my clothes. And, I went back to Germany and then they came, wanted to invite me again. I said, no, sorry. Uh, just I mean, after me. that experience, yeah. you don't think that you'd yeah. be coming I said, back. please give me my time. I need to think about all this. And then, then Germany came two years later and I decided to play for Germany then. Yo, tell us about the World Cup final. Yesterday I was watching it again and I, and I, realized, that, <laughs> I realized that Ronaldo's second goal, I you were the one to... who went into the tackle. But just listen, I was a striker. Yes, exactly. I just wanted to help out. Man, and I came late. It's it's right. to stop <laughs> <laughs> and I came late. It was like uh, going to the workout 2002 was like we, we were having a team. We are not having a great team, but we have. Uh, we we are, we are thinking okay, first. I think if you overcome the uh, uh, first run, mm -hmm. you're, you're you're okay, and then we became like what's going on. And after after this, uh, I think what's going on? Fifty finale. What to say? Fifty yeah, finale. No, same final. Quarter final. Quarter final. Quarter final. Quarter final uh, we thought, oh, we can, we can do, we can do something. Here. So yeah. we came like a, we became, a, we became like a team spirit. We came to the team, and then yeah. we had the games again against uh, Korea. It was an amazing game. We, we won uh, one uh, with Balak scored the goal, and then we had the final. Being a final, final was amazing. And playing against uh, against uh, Brazil with Ronaldo, with Rivaldo, with uh, Ronaldinho, I think it was amazing. And then, yeah. but we, this was our best game. What we did. At the World Cup, okay. but we lost to Ne. Ronaldo yeah. was too great for us. Yeah, because I mean, you, you guys came close many, many times. And did, did you, when, when you were on the bench before you came on, did you ever feel like it could it could be Germany's? I, I had the feeling we, we could win this game, but mm -hmm. we knew Brazil was with top stars. But we had a big team with team spirit to beat this team, and I think we started good, and then. Oliver Kahn did a mistake. I yeah. think a short. He did, uh, he did a mistake. And Ronaldo uh, scored his first goal, and then, you know, this uh, huge team scoring the first goal. It's be going, to, going to be easy to win the game. So yeah. I think it was amazing being a worker, but uh, uh, I didn't make it. I didn't make it. Right, um, uh, Derek. I'll come to you for you know a little bit of talk on the Black Stars and also your top five Black Stars players. But Gerard, who are your top five <laughs> players in Germany? In you Germany, know, of all time. Of all time. Oh. Then let me say uh, Oliver Kahn. Oliver, Oliver Kahn, Kahn. Yes, uh, yes. is really. Then my friend Manuel Neuer is also one of the best. What I say, I'm not taking two goalkeepers. Two goalkeepers. <laughs> 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 then let's go on. Uh, Balak. Balak. Balak was really, really amazing. Amazing, amazing fair player. Also, Lotto Matthias. Okay. Lotto Matthias. Okay. And now, one left there. Eh? One left, yeah. Oh, God. Who You're not picking one? yourself. 
No, no, no. I, it, it feels like I don't be arrogant. Right. I, I hope uh, Derek will pick me. Okay. So, so. so? In Ghana, where? In the middle, middle of them. <laughs> <laughs> and the last, the last, let me say, who should I take? Who should I take? Tony Cruz? Cruz? Oh, well, why? <laughs> why? No, no, we're asking. I mean, we just, why? 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 No, yeah, I've taken no, I've taken no, no, yeah. no, no, no. But it's, we are not talking about friends. We are talking about good players. Good players, yeah. So if right. if I have to pick a Ghanaian player, I will not pick it because you are not a good player. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll, yeah. So. Hear what he said. No, no. Did you hear what he said? What did he say? Uh huh. Ask him again. I said. Uh -huh. You told me I should good. I should pick good players, uh -huh. not friends. Okay. Yes. So if I should pick a player in Ghana, I'll mm -hmm. not pick Derek because you Derek. Oh, okay. okay. Because that's what he said. Derek. <laughs> okay, but Derek, what, what, what <laughs> your, what's your top five? What's your top five? Top five. Uh, blasters, Ghana blasters. Ghanaian Ghana Ghana players, Ghanaian Ghana players. Yeah, the ones I play with. Or... It could be anybody. Oh, no, just, just your top five. Just your top five. Across board. Okay, I'll go with Abedipele. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you are thinking of? Yeah, it's difficult. Hey, Tony Yeboa. Tony Yeboa, please. And Tony Yeboah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Sikiakono. Uh, okay. Okay. Joado. Joado. Okay. One more. One more. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you, Steven Apia. Ah, oh. Steven Apia. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to. Yeah, I, I play with him, so I play so after two. Seconds. Okay, so Derek's, Derek's final pick was Steven Apia, who has been on the show previously. It's been such an honor to have these legends on set right now. We'll take a breather here, but when we come back, there's a whole lot more on Warmer Plus.
We're back on Walmart Plus, and as promised, there's content for every single audience on this show. Now, we've done the main dugout, but we're moving into some interesting conversation as well, and I have the singular honor of introducing a special man. Now, if I'm talking about style, he's got it on lock. If I'm talking about business acumen, he's got it on lock. And even more recently, in the football world, he's also got it on lock. Help me welcome ex-BB, that's Big Brother Africa, Big Brother Niger, exactly, ex-housemate, and help me welcome Ozo. I'll be the one to you tonight. Right, most, most certainly. Uh, let's, let's just get into uh, the, the conversation with Ozo. But before we do that, though, uh, we, have, uh, we have another guest in the studio. Kwesi Arthur is joining us uh, this morning right here on the show. Kwesi Arthur, you know him, you love him. And let's welcome Kwesi Arthur. <laughs> Also, it's good to have you. Thank you, thank you for having me. How are you feeling? No, it's great. Uh, I've been in Ghana now for what, two days now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been uh, it's been really great. Yeah. I can't complain at all. Exactly, style on point as well. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. But, but yesterday I was listening to you on uh, one of the radio stations. You did, yeah. you, you did. You were really excited on the radio. Oh yeah, no, it was. Uh, was it like the one by eight pm? Yeah, the sports show. Yeah, no, yeah. it was good. I think the energy on that show was actually one of the. The highest, um, well, I say, levels of energy I've ever seen. I think everyone there was great. There was still like uh, so much talk about the uh, Champions League final again, and all the anchors there wanted to talk about it. So now for me, it was fun being on the show yesterday. Right. Now um, uh, let's let's just talk a bit about your your involvement in football. What yeah. prompted it? Why are you so involved in football? Um, no, it's. I mean, you look at Africa in general. Uh, football is pretty much like the um, the first sports we have. I think football comes first before you look at basketball, boxing, athletics, uh, and all that. And for me, um, I knew I was never going to be good enough to play professionally. So I decided to study and understand the business and the te technical side of, of football. Yeah. Uh, when I did my master's, wrote my thesis based on football finance and football management. Then I worked for one of the UEFA federations as a football academy analyst. So literally from there, I mean, my love for football has always been there. So yeah, it's been like a childhood thing. Right. Then growing up, seeing my dad watch lots of football games was actually what uh, prompted like my love for the game as well. well also, you, you were not good enough to play, but because he actually played for a while, <laughs> you know. For, for <laughs> oh, you did? Yeah. He, no, but it wasn't that serious. Yeah. yeah I was uh, playing in a Coast League team oh, in Tema. Yeah, but yeah. at some point, I just decided to stop. Yeah. <laughs> but look, we see what you did end up focusing on majorly is music and yes. I just want to touch a little bit on your lyrical content because I feel like it speaks to me okay. I listened to um, Devil Knocking and then Pray For Me and, and those words I wonder how are you able to convey so much in just a song and be able to relate it so much with people um, well when it comes to my music and how I create usually um, I like to talk about my life and stuff I'm going through uh, but sometimes I feel like um, things just come to me like I don't know where it's from but on a song like Devil Knocking I feel like it just came to me and it happened to be it happened to relate to me in some form you get me yeah you've so. also had, had the opportunity to work with a lot of different artists what is it like collaborating um usually it's fun usually it's fun but most of the collabs I've done um people send it to me via mail and stuff but when I get to go out and collaborate with people in the studio, like, yeah, it's really fun. It's very big for yeah. you. Um, yeah. definitely. Also, I watched you on Big Brother Niger, and yeah. there was a particular set that you were doing a presentation on football, and just how much you spoke about it. You spoke about structure, you spoke about academy goals, and generally building from the ground up. And Yao asked you about how passionate you are when it comes to these things. Yeah. Do you think that you're the man to make a difference when it comes to the world of football, not just in Nigeria, but perhaps the world at large? Um, well, I say I'm the man. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's, it's there for everyone to, to say that. Um, for me, I always say like it's different people. For someone that's passionate about a specific sector, um, all you can do is just to do your best. You, mm -hmm. you apply yourself the, uh, the best you can. Yeah. And um, obviously the prayer and uh, what I hope for the most is act actually meet like-minded people. Because I always say uh, sometimes people go into sports and all these things because of the financial benefits. But I always say the best idea to have is 
how best could you help that specific sector uh, improve? Mm -hmm. And if you can, and hopefully myself, I hope, I, I believe I can, uh, and also with the help of other like-minded people, I think there's a lot, there's a lot to be done because I always see sports. Sports for me is the last bastion of not the connections you know, but it's about your ability. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't get to play because of the connections you have. Yeah. You get to play because of the ability that you do have. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also a great way of creating jobs for people because I always said it, no, not everyone should have like a white collar job or go to the office and spend nine to five hours there. And in Africa, we're blessed with so much physical talent as well. And if we could develop this talent in the right way, we could be able to create, uh, create more jobs for people. So that's pretty much what my, uh, my main mindset is. But also, you've spoken about, you know, the business aspect of things. But, you know, there's scouting, there's agency, there's a lot. Mm. Is it that you want to put your hands in all these different fields, particularly pertaining to football, or there's a particular area you want to make your specialty? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, with, so there's always football for me. And I'm, also, I'm also going to look at boxing as well. Okay. And, um, and also basketball. But then when you look at it, talking about the scouting aspect, um, when you're meant to scout football players, there's something called the four-corner mode you're meant to scout the players with. But we really don't do that uh, in most of the African okay, countries. Okay. So we need to be able to understand, okay, what kind of players are we actually trying to get? And uh, at the end of the day, that's what I want to do. I'm going to go into football, basketball, boxing. These are like the three main sports uh, I'm trying to start off with as well. Right, definitely. Lizzie, um, back to you. I mean, uh, uh, even yesterday we had a conversation on, on Hearts of Oak. But, yeah. you, you know, I mean, they're still <laughs> top of the league. Things are looking good for them. Tomorrow they take on Accra Great Olympics. What do you think? What do you make of your team? Um, well, I haven't been following um, that so for a while because uh, I don't know for whatever reason or maybe I'm too busy. Yeah, yeah but um, I hope they win. Yeah. Yeah, I, was li I was listening to the radio the other day and people were having an argument. Mm -hmm. I think the Olympics coach was talking about scoring how to folk and how to folk keeping most of their players from going to the national team because exactly, yeah. they are facing them and mm -hmm. like... I think Haas is going to beat them, so yeah, make them make ready. But <laughs> give me your give me your top five players in in Ghana. If if you are if if you know the players you watch, the players yeah. you heard of, top five. Yeah. Um. Well, I would say Kudus Mohamed. Kudus now. Yeah, Amazing. yeah. I really do like Kudus. Kudus yeah. be too hard. Um. Kudus Mohamed, Thomas Partey. Thomas Partey. Andre, are you? Um. Andre, are you? Jordan, are you? Mm -hmm. Who else? Yeah. 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 That's um, four. Um, so, so, so you, you were able to give me just four, but yeah. also your top five teams. My top five teams. Yeah. Well, I sent you guys a yeah, message. Yeah. So we just want to. And I put um, House of Folk, uh -huh. um, Manchester United, okay. Real Madrid, okay. Juventus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put Chelsea last. You put yeah, Chelsea last. Yeah. I have a love hate relationship with, with Chelsea. Chelsea. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. They are still riding off of the Champions League victory. They oh, don't yeah, need yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. They're really what, 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 What's your top five? Are you a Chelsea top, fan? Also? No, I'm an Arsenal fan. Oh, also. Yeah. Like <laughs> mine. Arsenal fan. Like mine. <laughs> <laughs> that, Next season, we're coming back bigger no, and better. we have to. So have I'll to. start for you, Arsenal. Top so, team. So for me, Arsenal, uh. Real Madrid, <laughs> um, Juventus. Uh, after Juventus, I'll say Manchester City mm -hmm. and... Last would be Ajax, maybe. Ajax. When you started but Manchester, I thought you were going to add United. No, yeah. no, no, no. <laughs> Relax. You, you can't be, you can't abominable. Be an completely and, abominable. And love, I love uh, <laughs> also, United. Let's, no. Let's let's talk a bit about the Super Eagles. The yeah. last time Super Eagles won the Afcon was in 2013. Mm. I mean, um, a lot has been done. The last time you were in the semi-final, yeah. you, you were quite close. This time yeah. around, next year in Cameroon, your neighbours. How are you? How how do you see the team? And is there a possibility that Nigeria could go in there? and do something bigger than they did. I think the best, uh, the, the best thing I would say, the biggest positive I think I can just put my, my finger on is the fact that um, the, man, the, the coach has been playing with uh, a system of three at the back mostly. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's, what, uh, that's the structure we're going to have in place moving forward. Yeah. I think for me the fear is going to be if we start to chop and change uh, systems just before we get, we get to the Afghans. Um, like I said also on the radio show yesterday, the good thing for us is we have like a credible spine to the team. We have a goalkeeper that we do right. trust in now. Yeah. Uh, we have two centre-backs that we believe in. We mm -hmm. have Ndidi and then we hope Ihan Acho carries on the form he had towards the end of the season in Leicester, yeah. uh, all through uh, the start of the season and also to the yeah, AFCON. So yeah. with that spine of the team, yes, and you have people like Chukwes on the, on the side, yeah. you have Iwobi. So hopefully uh, we could be able to play the same system and gel and have like a team that could challenge. I'm actually, play, uh, I'm actually praying for another Ghana-Nigeria game so that we can beat you guys again. 
<laughs> but, but this is Warmer Plus and also it's in the studio as well as Chrissy Atta. We're just wrapping up on the show now. Happy birthday to my mother, uh, Ikuya Kesua, Kantamanto, Lane 9. Happy birthday to you. June 5 is your birthday. Tonight you are celebrating. Aniela, take us away. I mean, Chrissy, I would actually hope and pray that you just do a brief skit for Pray For Me because that's my job. Oh, really? That's my job. When you said, just won't be alone. Yeah. yeah. Caught up in my zone. Yeah. Oh, be around me, friend, me, but I won't pick up the phone. <laughs> yeah. Live my best today. Cause I'm not promised tomorrow. Yeah. This could be the last time you yeah. see me like this. Wow, you really, you, you, you really know it. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to take it that way. I don't want to carry it over. <laughs> oh, wow, that's hard. <laughs> Was he? Just, just give us something. Just give us something small. Let's stage just your story. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, 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 you know go stop. All my G's running now, running now, running now, running now, running now, you know go stop. You the pretend, living a lot, you know be gang, our a lot. Hey, hey. When and when and you know go stop. All my G's running now, when and now, when and now, when and now, when and now, you know go stop. All my G's running now, when and now, when and now, when and now, when and now, you know go stop. You the pretend, living a lot, you know be gang, our a lot. All my G's running now, when and now, when and now, when and now, when and now, you know go stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ain't God that it trust. Me taking no loss. We be the hardest on the scene. Gemstones from the dust. Big dog, my tea leash. Where's the love in the streets? Put my heart on a beat. See the blood on my sheets. Yeah, yeah, when we ready. Me hit it heavy. I zoom out the pride of my people already. Tell my tea early. Me, I'm just sharing my journey. I'm thankful the people that hear me. Travel Joseph, I'm ahead of the bunch. P5, I was starving for months. A running cat team, both of my pockets. Me need my DNA, baby, for lunch. But we call me Start before BBC, don't take a lot to get rid of me. Me and I don't get the same thing. Me and I don't get the same things. For I die, they gon' know who the name is. They say I move like I'm nameless. Cause I only come for the money bags and I don't really wanna be famous. But all my G's winning it. Winning it. When and now, you know go stop. When and now, 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 you know go stop. You the pretend, living a lie. You know we gang, how I love. All my G's. Right, so most certainly, this is Warmer Plus, and you know there's always excitement on the show. Chrissy Arthur, thank you very much. Thank you to Ozo as well for coming. And Aniela, just uh, finish it up. Huge right. thanks to Ozo. And I'm very happy that you're an Arsenal fan because that's the way to go. That is the future. Again, so <laughs> our <laughs> wishes, that is the future. Chrissy, thank you so much for that. We'll, 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 be, we'll be in touch. Maybe a Pray For Me remix or something going on. <laughs> Not in the music industry, but thank you guys so much for gracing the occasion. Big shout out to the Catalan Ghana as well for all our props. And also, go fab in Tema for my beautiful outfit. Well, most certainly. Aniela, thank you very much. And this is how we close out the show. Next week, we are back with another exciting edition of Warmer Plus. JD. Hey.